Okay, so I found a method that works pretty good for me on polishing this crank after some trial and error with uh, different types of things here. But uh, now I think I got it down pat where I can actually put it on video. The uh, first thing you want to do before you do any sanding or polishing, at least this is what I think, is you want to check your crank dimension because you want to make sure you don't go too crazy with it and remove any metal to change that dimension. Really the whole purpose of polishing a crank is get rid of scratches. Scratches I don't have, a little bit of rust and pitting I do. There's a slight nick right there. I don't know if that was done before or after disassembly. But we'll get, that'll be gone when we're done with this. So I'm getting, this is a two to three inch micrometer. I'm getting One inch, 199 and a half. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. So, first thing I want to do, cut me off a piece of, uh, this is 600 grit. It's a, uh, it's a sandpaper. Actually, this is for body work. Emery cloth works better, but I couldn't find nobody in town that has emery cloth this fine. The finest I found was like a 220. And for what I'm doing, I didn't want to hit it with that rough of paper. And maybe if you got some deep scratches, you want to hit it with 220 and then step it down to a finer, and you know, to a finer sandpaper. Do it in stages until you get it smooth, and then polish it off with scotch brite or some kind of polishing cloth. But, I'll just take my 600 grit and I'll try to cut it as close to the width of that journal as I can so that it covers the whole surface. I would probably cut this a lot straighter if I took the time to measure it and draw a line and cut along the line, but that looks like it fits pretty good. I need to trim that a little bit. Just make sure it all fits in there. And I'm going to spray it with some, uh, this is a cheap version of WD-40 is all this is. Spray that. And if you can see it, which I bet you can, um, we're just wanting to get rid of these rust pits here. Um, now, so I've done two journals. The first one turned out really nice because it didn't have a, a lot of pitting. The second one, I couldn't really get all the pitting out, and I'm afraid if I tried hard enough to get all the pitting out, I would actually uh, remove some steel, which would make it small, and I would have too much burying clearance. So if I can just polish it up, you know, a little bit of slight pitting is not going to hurt me. That would be better than getting it undersized. So remember that if you're moving scratches, um, if the scratches are too deep, you need to take your crank to a machine shop and have it turn. But as you can see, I just wrapped this piece of cloth. This is just a strip of cloth. I cut off an old pair of blue jeans. Something reasonably strong that will grab on it. A couple guys did videos with a shoe, and used a shoestring to do this. And they seemed to have good luck. I tried that and it kept slipping on the sandpaper. So I looked up some more videos and found another guy that used piece of cloth and it just grips it better. Try to wrap it around more that way you get a more even load. But I'm doing it like this with a 600. Then I'm going to follow it with a thousand. Then I'll just scotch bracket it. It will look better than some engines I've seen go together. Not that I did it myself. I've seen some people Throw some stuff together that would make you cringe, but it ran fine, so. Let's see how that looks. Maybe blue jean isn't the best cloth. See all the strings hanging up on me. But you can see you still got some rust there. And that wheel gets shinier. Yeah, this one, you can't really feel it, but you can see it. So we'll 
go over a little more. Let's just check it with my micrometer real quick. It's still 199 and a half. Now for the thousand grit, I got it looking pretty decent there. Make sure there's no chunks or anything in there. I just felt a little piece of something. You got a little piece of metal or something in there. You could put a big scratch in it. Not good. And this thousand grit is so fine you can barely feel it bite, which means we're just polishing really. And I don't really have to go over it with the Scotch Bright after this probably, but I will anyway. Let me say to go as far as you can with each pull that way. You are hopefully getting equal pressure to all surfaces. Before this is said and done, I'll probably have to cut me another piece of cloth off, and that's okay. It's just throw away clothes anyway. Need a good dry, right? And we'll go over with some Scotch Bright, which should hopefully make it noticeably shinier. center there on me. Scotch Bright makes it look a lot more shinier, and yeah, I can almost almost can't see my pitting now. Almost got it all. Even looks a little better in those radiuses. And actually, that is that is good enough because, like I said, you don't want to go too crazy with it. Take too much off. Still 199 and a half, 2 inch, 199 and a half. Very, very good. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, I'm on the last rod journal. Still got to do all the main journals. But uh, as I did the these other journals after I shut the camera off, I learned a little something that I probably should share with you since I'm kind of trying to make this a how-to video. If you remember, I told you that uh, some of the rust stains seemed a little more stubborn than other journals. Well, here's what I learned. Okay, I'm on the final stage here with the Scotch Bright, so I'll just show you with it. And this applies with if you're using sandpaper too. I found out, see, like I'm, if I'm just, notice I'm pulling up, most of my pressure, of course, it's pretty obvious if you watch it, is on the bottom side. I found out when my top side still didn't look as good as I wanted, my top side looked nice, or bottom side looked nice. Got that wrong. So, which, what really helps, all helps it to uh, clean up quicker all the way around is to do like I'm doing here. Of course, you stop, start right here and you just kind of go all the way around that way because most of your pressure is still on the opposite side that you're pulling. So what I did, I started going all the way around like this. Of course, I had to remount my crank in the vise and I laid it on top of a block of wood on the other end. And I don't have it clamped too tight. Just got it snug so it doesn't fall out. But just go around like this. And I found out that all the surface all around the journal cleans up a lot quicker. And it will be more even. So I just wanted to show you that. And yes, that looks, oh yes, it looks much better. Not bad at all. Okay, everything's, all the journals are polished up, as good as I'm going to get them. I think they are good enough, for sure. And I took a Scotch-Brite pad on my die grinder. Didn't remove any metal, but I just kind of shined up the counterweights a little bit. What I couldn't get to, just sanded and scotch bright in the middle there, just to get that surface rust off of it. And it turned out pretty good. Now we want to blow all the um, oil passages out. And each one, you got two in here. This one leads to this main journal over here. This one leads to here. And there is another one right here. There it comes out there. And so on and so forth. On down the line there. And I haven't even washed it out yet. I'm going to use some brake cleaner to squirt inside of those oil hose just to make sure nothing's sticking in there. clean rag, just wipe it all off, and I'm going to blow all these journals out one more time, soak it down with WD-40, and that'll be it. See how that brake cleaner kind of stains your polished surface there, you want to wipe that off real good, even before you spray it back down with a lubricant. And this crank looks as, about as good as it did the day this engine was freshly built. And after I finish, after I blow these oil passages out one more time, I'll soak it down and I will be done.